can science explain consciousness? I mean, the idea that's on the table here, it seems to me, is maybe there are some dimensions of consciousness that are beyond the explanatory power of science. Well, is, is, that a, is that a legitimate hypothesis to entertain? Well, it's not a very interesting one <laughs> because, because it doesn't do any work for us. I mean, I, I think it's fair to, I, I would say we should just bracket that possibility and work as if we could discover enough information about how certain things work mechanistically to gain an intuition that's precise about how things that we consider conscious happen in, our, in the human brain. Uh, the, the question of where does consciousness start sort of on a phylogenetic spectrum is a hard one because, you know, without a mechanism attached to what we already are trying to solve about when we're conscious or not, uh, it, it, it's not a meaningful question to me. I mean, I don't think a jellyfish is conscious, at least in a way that makes any contact or does any work for me to help me understand the problem of assigning consciousness as a possibility mechanistically for a physical system, which is a brain, usually when I'm thinking about it. I mean, <laughs> but, you know, if it is true that we could be fooled into thinking that, that a robot is conscious, a fully expressive emotional robot, that really changes the picture entirely. And mm -hmm. then all that is left, I think, in the psychology. Because asking the ontological question, is the robot really conscious, I, I'm really not sure that there is any more that we can do besides the fact that, yes, we think it is. But we I feel think, it is. Yeah. I was going to say, and I think that the, uh, the studying and figuring out our intuitions about what is conscious is an important question for oh, two reasons. One is they're fantastically wrong. I mean, I right. think everything we know about our intuition suggests they're fantastically wrong. However, they govern a lot of our behavior and a lot of our judgments about things, right? I mean, so right now in, in politics, we have questions about whether corporations should have rights. And I bet our lay intuitions about whether those corporations have subjective experiences probably tell us something about you know, what we should be doing to them, right? There's a big question about when we leave the reception here, should we be eating things that have meat in it of certain forms, of certain kinds of animals? And I bet our intuitions about whether we should be doing that are governed, in fact, by whether or not these guys have conscious states. So I think understanding what our intuitions are telling us is, is going to be really important and really meaningful. Um, but they might be wrong. Dave, I want to come back to you because, I mean, do you agree with what the rest of the panel or some of the panelists are saying that basically some of these questions are not relevant because science has no handle on some of the larger philosophical questions about consciousness? I mean, I'm not saying that Nico should give up his day job today right. and, go, and go, go study electron lines. You know, this, right. would, this, would be a, this would be crazy. But I do think that it is a meaning, first, it is a meaningful question whether jellyfish are conscious, whether it, go, whether it goes further. And there is a fact of the matter about it, which maybe we're not in a position to, to tell right now, maybe not ever. However, I think you know, there's going to be a way to, there may be ways eventually to get at this through scientific methods, if indirect ones. Here's what I think we have to do. We have to start with the cases of consciousness we know about, the cases where we have data, roughly the, the, the human case. Build a theory, an explanatory theory that connects consciousness there, for example, to, uh, to, to brain process. I think of this as, trying to abstract away the, you know, sort of the fundamental principles that connect brain processes to consciousness. It could turn out that the most successful theory that explains the data we have says that consciousness is generated by certain kinds of you know, complex processes, you know, certain kinds of reasoning, or certain kinds of complex recurrent structures, and so on. Then we'll be in a position to say, to extend these to other cases and say, well, that's the theory that works, extend it to the other cases, right. where that structure is not present we should expect that consciousness yeah. is not present. It could turn out, on the other hand, though, that the theory of consciousness that explains it the best turns out to tie consciousness to some basic properties, for example, of information and information processing in the brain. And then what we'll want to do is to extend it to other cases. And it may be speculative because we can't measure consciousness directly in those systems. We but that, think, that might this theory gives us reason to think yeah. that there is some Well, that, that might help to explain computer consciousness yeah. then. I mean, if, if consciousness ultimately is about information, uh, you know, a computer might have a, an, an integrated information system as the human brain does. Well, I mean, it could be, and, and, and that would lead, I think, to a conflict in intuitions. It could be that your research could isolate an area in the brain that is associated with consciousness, that is active. I, you know, I'm mm. speculating. And then if we found animals that don't have that area of the brain, we would have some, you know, we, we would have some reason to say they don't have consciousness. But, but that would really conflict with 
the intuitions associated with a robot, mm -hmm. who certainly doesn't have those areas of the brain, and can fool us into the, can fool us, can lead us mm -hmm. into, can generate the same intuitions that it has consciousness. So I don't, I don't really see an, a way out of this. I, I, but the problem with the robot, I think, as an analogy, is that it, it, it isn't typically the case that most of the intuitions about consciousness just come from observing other people. They come from this introspective uh, mm -hmm. aspect of examining natural language and, and having subjective, or, or, or at least taking the attitude that we have subjective experience and then acting accordingly and sharing it, as you would say. So, uh, it, But you could surely program a robot to to do all of the above. I mean, there is no... no you, you, you could, but if, if you now, knew it was a robot, mm -hmm. then that might be the only reason why you wouldn't attribute consciousness to it, and it wouldn't be a bad reason today, unless we had a mechanistic account of what consciousness mm -hmm. arose from, and we had instantiated that in the robot. So, so Danny, how about we take your neurons and replace them one at a time by, uh, <laughs> by <laughs> which are functionally isomorphic to the original uh, neurons, and yeah, replace I mean, half I, your brain, and then we'll ask you. You know, I... Berkeley, you know, John, we speculated a lot about whether, you know, it has to be made of meat. And, uh, and I don't see any reason why it would have to be made of meat. So uh, if, if you found silicon substitutes, I, I see no reason to, and, and the functioning would remain the same and the emotional expressions would remain the same? That transfers the problem sort of the way David is yeah. talking about that because, it, it, as yeah. you say, it could be information or it could be some other aspect of complex matter that the brain is an, is an example of sharing that mm -hmm. property that's essential. And once we understand that, certain things will become transparent about how this kind of thing happens. I do, I do think it's more likely to be the information than something than the biology, for example. Right, like, mm -hmm. like, like plasma physics, yeah. like something about condensed matter or some kind of like you know, thing that happens with certain kinds of things. Mm -hmm. if, it had, if, it, if it is the information, then that doesn't fit with our intuitions, which are driven primarily by emotions. Mm -hmm. So our attributions of consciousness are driven by emotions. When we think about consciousness, we think about information processing. And there is really a deep disconnect between those two.